I've travelled nearly 2,000 kilometres into the Australian outback all alone, but difficult roads have led me to beautiful destinations. We're heading towards some sand dunes apparently that are down this way. I went to a local corner store in Windora and grabbed a coffee, filled up the car with some diesel and the girl that was serving me there has lived here all her life and she said there's a popular sand dune which I've been to down the road but she said there's another one that's nicer further down this way and she gave me some vague directions so I'm trying to find my way there so fingers crossed I can find it but along my way I saw all of these birds I'm not really sure what sort of birds they are I'm assuming they're a type of eagle maybe anyway let's hit the road again and try and find the sand dune dogs are incredibly tired after all that chasing of the drone that's why I normally leave them in the car because if I let them out they do that they chase the drone and they have no obedience when it comes to the drone they do not listen to me they just chase it and if they grab hold of it they'll actually injure themselves because of the blades of the drone so that's why I normally have them in the car but this was just too good to leave them in the car for. I wanted them to run around and enjoy this beautiful scenery and moment as much as I am because these guys are getting on now. Edgy's 13 and a half and Luna's 10 this month. So they're getting on and who knows how much longer I'll have them for. Honestly, I can't imagine my life without them. <laughs> We've just left Windora where I stayed for four nights and five days nearly. Windora seems to be a bit of a stopover town for people traveling out to Birdsville. I think the signage said Birdsville was like 390 kilometers from Windora and there was no fuel stops between Windora and Birdsville. So the sign said it's 390 kilometers, obviously make sure you have enough fuel if you're traveling out that way. It seems as though Windora is a bit of a stopover for people traveling through because it's funny, in the afternoon, the caravan park would fill up and then by the next morning, say 9am, when I opened my curtains, everyone was gone and I had pretty much the whole caravan park to myself. So I stayed there for a couple of days just to relax a little bit after all of this driving and traveling I've been doing to get some photo editing done and also edit my previous YouTube video. So staying at the caravan park, it was pretty much the same price to plug into power and have water. So I plugged in, even though I'm off grid and I didn't really need to plug in, I did just to sort of have peace of mind knowing that like if I'm gonna spend hours sitting on my computer, it doesn't really matter because I've got endless power. And it also gives me a good opportunity to just top everything up, like even charge my Jackery uh, portable power generator that sits in the car, I top that up, charge my e-bike battery, all those sorts of things while I had the opportunity. So yeah, that was a lovely little town. And I also just wanted to mention that along my trip so far, there's been so much that I haven't shared with you guys. For example, all of the beautiful people that I've met along my journey so far. When I first set off on this trip, I met Dave and Gail at the Laidley Showgrounds and Dave was walking by and saw me struggling to fix my stabilizer on my caravan, which had actually broken. And it meant that when I was walking around inside the van, it was very shaky and stuff. So I really wanted to fix that so that didn't, you know, my whole house wasn't shaking every time I walked around or the dogs jumped on and off the bed. 
and Dave stopped and gave me a hand and I believe he's now watching some of my YouTube videos so shout out to Dave and Gail who I met. Then I met two separate guys at Charlotte Plain Station so shout out to Luke and Matt if you guys are watching. It was really nice to meet you guys and at Yarra I met a couple more people. There was Graham and Tina and Keith and Nock. So we went down to the local pub. I don't know if you'd call it a pub. It was pretty much just a shed and we had a drink together. It was funny, like none of us really knew each other. We were just a bunch of strangers hanging out. I wanted to mention all of these beautiful people that I've met because they have shaped my experience on this journey so far. It's not just about all the beautiful places that you see, but the people that you meet and stories that you hear people's recommendations it all shapes your trip so I just wanted to make mention that there is a lot that I've been experiencing that I'm not sharing in my videos and the reason I'm not sharing that is because these are pretty genuine encounters and it doesn't feel natural for me to just like whip out my camera and be like hi I'm filming you and you don't even know me I think yeah it, the respectful thing to do is to not pull my camera out in those situations and you know maybe there'll be situations one day where i will be able to capture that for you guys but for now i think i'd prefer to keep those interactions private just to be respectful to the people i'm meeting and to just i guess have more authentic interactions and not make everything about content creation Can you believe this is for free, <laughs> this camp? It's so beautiful and there's no one else here. So the sun isn't even up yet, it's just starting to rise now. And so we get this beautiful pinky blue hue over that side of the sky because the sun's coming up behind you guys. This is my first morning waking up here and seeing this with you guys for the first time. So I wanna fill you all in, but I also wanna absorb all this beauty. <laughs> it's funny, you know, like, this is probably the most remote I've ever camped. I'm, I think it's 20 minutes south of Stonehenge, if that's how you pronounce the town. But I've traveled over 1700 kilometers now away from Brisbane where I normally live. And I always thought to myself, traveling all by myself to a remote area like this, I'd feel scared. And although at first when I set off on this trip, I felt mixed feelings. At times I felt like turning around and going home and I have no idea why I felt like that but those feelings didn't last very long. Soon enough they kind of passed by and then I was excited about my journey again and now that it's been two weeks and I've travelled over 1700 kilometres I'm feeling very comfortable being out here on my own. I'm still well aware of obviously the risks of being so isolated by myself and of course I'm taking extra caution for those risks but overall I feel pretty safe. I think it's good to have a healthy amount of fear but I'm not as scared as I thought I was going to be out here. Nearly forgot my cup of coffee. <laughs> you may have heard me talk about how at times I even thought about selling my caravan and buying like a cargo van and decking that out instead and the motivation for that idea was simply based on fear. Like I was quite scared traveling by myself, not being able to just jump in the driver's seat and get away if I had to. And being in the caravan means that if something was to happen, like say there's a scary person outside, I'd have to go outside to get in the car to get away. And that always really scared me to the point I was like, oh, well, I'll just sell the van and do a cargo van instead. And then also like the idea of towing the caravan really scared me. And I thought, 
there's too much too much fear involved in this whole caravan project and traveling with the caravan I you know should just give up and do something else but now that I'm kind of at the other end of it I'm really happy that I didn't give in to that fear and I've pushed through because although on the surface level I might appear brave to some people and I'm saying this because it's genuinely what people have said to me I might come across as brave for learning how to tow and doing it by myself and traveling out here this far but these those achievements aren't the big achievements they're just sort of surface level achievements it's the parts of myself that have overcome fear I was once a very fearful person so my dad calls me mouse and he says that's because when I was born I look like a little mouse but I think a large part of that nickname comes from me being a pretty fearful person but I think I've outgrown that nickname now dad <laughs> can't believe how quiet it is like I don't think in my entire life I've ever experienced such silence you guys might see the sun hitting my face now it's coming up over there, it looks really beautiful. I should probably grab the camera and film that for you guys. So finally, after six months on the road, the chickens are laying eggs. So I've just got one this morning. Oop. Just got one egg this morning, so I'm having that for brekkie. All right, nearly ready to hit the road. But before we do, I want to show you guys what I actually found when I went fossicking. So in my last episode, you guys saw me fossicking at Yawa. Uh, I didn't really film much fossicking there, although I did spend probably like an hour or so there. I didn't find anything. And so I continued to travel north and that following night I stayed at Quilpie and there was a sign as I was leaving Quilpie that said there was a fosking area at the airport. So I pulled in there and had a little wander around and found Opal just literally sitting on the side of the road. So yes, this is my dog food container and I've hidden all of the opals and rocks in here. Um, but let me show you what I actually found. So this is my dog food container, but I've stored all the uh, rocks with the opal, bits of opal that I've found in here just because, I don't know, I don't know really where else to put it. But anyway, this is the most exciting piece that I found. So once again, I don't really know much about fossicking, but I did sort of learn that these are called tracks where you can see uh, the opal sort of running through a rock and also like there's bits of color in there. So this is something that you'd want to like cut open and see, you know, what you can find in here. So this has so many little tracks running all through it, over every single side of it, and even up here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but look at that. There's so much color in there, and that's quite a large chunk. So it'll be interesting to cut this one up and see what I find in here. Like there's some more there. Um... Even if it's not technically worth a lot of money, for me, that's still pretty cool to find. So I've got two other really big pieces. Look at this here. That's so beautiful. And I also learned that if you can see flecks of green and red and like lots of color in the opal, that's what makes it potentially worth more money. And I can actually see in some of the pieces that I've found flecks of those colors. Here's another one, another big chunk. I can't believe this was just literally sitting next to the car park at the airport where the fossicking area was. And then I've got lots of other little pieces here that have flecks that shine through. That are probably worth cutting open just to get kind of like different looks and textures. So yes, in the end, I found Opal.
up some leftover pasta and I've just prepared this little dish for the chickens who are whinging in the background. As I pulled in, I saw hundreds, I mean, it could have been thousands of sheep in the paddock behind me here, just like standing there looking at me. And I pulled over and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be the best photo. Cause it was just sheep to the horizon. And they were all looking towards me. And I'm like, oh, I need to get a photo of that. But of course, as soon as I pulled up, I scared them off. So I started running and I thought, well, it's gonna be road train going past. road train go past so instead of getting the camera out because I knew I was going to miss the shot I just flew the drone over and chased her around a little bit I think I've got some pretty cool footage there no this was Amy's food you had your food you were such a pig interested in seeing behind the scenes exclusive content your name mentioned in my video credits or early access to my youtube videos you might like to consider becoming a patron by becoming a patron you're not just joining a community you're also financially supporting my video production and my nomadic lifestyle moving forward to become a patron follow the link in my description below this video until next time thank you for your support and i'll see you in my next episode